everybody, George Donnelly here. Uh, inflows and remittances, why do they matter? I've literally, literally been talking about this for three years, researching it. Here's the bottom line, real simple. If people don't have Bitcoin Cash, they can't spend Bitcoin Cash. And if they can't spend Bitcoin Cash, then there's no economic activity, right? And then nobody has Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> so it just remains a cute idea. Um, that's why inflows matter, right? And it's the basic problem with merchants. If you can go to any merchant directory, even map.bitcoin.com, and you can find merchants there that uh, no longer accept Bitcoin Cash, right? Um, and this is not a dig on anybody. It's just a fact of life that if you onboard a merchant today, and if you, nobody shows up to spend Bitcoin Cash in X amount of time, then first of all, the merchant just forgets about Bitcoin Cash. He forgets how it works. Maybe he deletes the app off his phone. Maybe he loses his private key. Maybe he doesn't remember how to accept it, right? Some of them get upset about it. Um, and so what happens is merchant adoption, even, you know, it's valuable. Some people become cynical about it because it hasn't paid off. And this is why, uh, merchant adoption becomes a question of like spinning your wheels. You know, I don't know, uh, if you haven't, if you're not watching the deadliest roads, uh, documentary series on YouTube, I definitely recommend it. But if you, uh, like the common theme in all these is like the roads, are not really roads they're just like big piles of mud and you put big trucks on them carrying uh perishable goods and they just get to a point and they spin their wheels and they fall slide off the road and the road and there's and everything stops you know and there are like hundreds of trucks lined up over miles waiting to <laughs> waiting to move forward and there are people in towns and cities waiting for uh food product food and other products to arrive right so that's what that's what merchant adoption, that's what general adoption is uh, without inflows. It's just spinning your wheels because there's no road, right? It's just mud. Um, it's just like you affiliate somebody and a few months later, they're like, what's that? Because I never use it. Nobody shows up to pay with it. Or only the person doing the merchant adoption and their close friends, you know, they like wrote to, they like go to the trouble of rotating dinner parties for OGs as meetups around to like just a few, you know, these places, you know, but like you can only do that so much. Right. Um, and that, that's cool. That's awesome. Like, that's great. I have nothing bad to say about that, but that's not scalable. You know, that's not scalable. That's, that's not, that's not a serious strategy for scaling up real world use, you know, even though it's quite valuable, I think it's wonderful. Um, inflows is means that people are, are earning Bitcoin cash one way or another. Right. And then once people, you have a population of people who are earning it, they have some, right. Maybe they're not immediately cashing it out. Right. Maybe they understand it. They're holding it. And then you can, you can run, uh, you know, marketing, advertising, whatever to these people and say, Hey, we got some merchants here. Why don't you spend it there? Right. And some of them will, they absolutely will. And then you can talk to these people and say, well, where else would you like to spend some Bitcoin cash? Right. And then you go to these, uh, to these places, this list that they've given you and you onboard some of them, you know, some of them immediately, some over a long time, some will never will. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then you start building an economy, right. But if there's no inflows, right. People, so he, here's a common misconception, right? People think, well, Bitcoin Cash is superior money. It, it is, right? Um, people sh are just going to gangbusters, like run to the ATMs and the exchanges and whatever and exchange their local fiat for, uh, for Bitcoin Cash. Well, there are some problems with that. First of all, understanding. There's not enough education, right? Uh, another one is... The fees, the fees, the fees, God damn, ATM fees, local exchange fees. I mean, 
is pretty nuts. Yeah, it can get pretty nuts. Um, and then, and then the most important problem is, okay, uh, I got paid today, and then uh, and I bought Bitcoin Cash, and then the market fell ten percent. So now I'm gonna go spend uh, Bitcoin Cash, which is volatile, right? At these local merchants that I already buy everything from, and they already accept my local fiat. Why? Why are you gonna absorb that volatility risk? right and then so some people will say oh well they should just they'll just get paid in bitcoin cash well you're asking a lot you're asking a lot and for the same reasons as i've already stated and then some people say well once you know we should we that's stable coins they're the answer stable coins are the future and or any hedge needs to be in the wallet to fix that but you know stable coins also have fees and they, they have absolutely no upside. They're all downside, right? Because fiat is being constantly inflated. Um, and stable coins are, you know, they can be redlined, you know? They can say, well, these, these accounts, the paperwork hasn't been uh, uh, properly um, uh, filed out, filled out. So we're just gonna say these addresses even though they have like 10,000 USDC they, or USDT, they can, they're not spendable. They can't be spent, right? And also, even, even if you fix all your stable, all these stable coin issues and fees and whatnot, at the end of the day, when you promote a, a stable coin that has the letters U and S in it, you're working for the Fed, right? You're working for the United States empire. You are promoting the interests of the U.S. empire to the detriment of local, uh, local institutions, right? Like, let's say I go to Bolivia and I'm like, hey, everybody adopt USDC or adopt DAI, which is mostly USDC, or adopt, you know, PAX or whatever. I mean, I might as I mean, I'm working for the Fed and I'm not getting a paycheck for it, right? And I'm promoting the principles and the monetary decisions of the, of the Fed, of the US government. And is anybody in crypto to do that? Are you here to do that? I'm not here to do that. That doesn't interest me. I'm not interested in promoting more centralization, which is what that would be. I'm not interested in strengthening any empire, any government, any central bank. How does that help anyone? It doesn't. It absolutely does not. Um, so, yeah. So um, that's why that's why inflows matter. I mean, without inflows, you don't. There's nothing happening, right? And so you want to look at how to get inflows, right? And so if you look at the approach of read cash, noise cash, wonderful projects. Love the guy behind it. I think Mark Demisel uh, deserves lots of kudos for his support of it. I, he's probably spent more than a million dollars on that. Maybe more than two million. I, I don't know. I'm not privy to that information. Um, and I know some people have made some decent money off of that. And that's great. However... Is that a sustainable model for inflows? Do, you know, what do we do when Mark's one or two million dollars run out? I mean, are we building a system here that depends on generous millionaires to and you know capable developers to invent new ways to hand out money, right? No. But it's great. It's great, like bootstrapping, like scaffolding. I mean, I'm not trying to hate on it at all. I love it. I think it's great. I think actually, I I have said this before, and I still believe it. Uh, to date, read.cash and noise.cash are the most important and, and effective uh, projects uh, in Bitcoin Cash, in my humble opinion, uh, at least in the area of onboarding. Yeah, at the very least, there. Um, so. You know, and we want, you know, instead of engineering ways to give it away, right? 
to give away value, which is, is, is a net drain. I think we want to explore ways to, um, to capture existing economic activity, bring it into the Bitcoin cash economy and make a profit off of it so that it's sustainable, right? Cause that's the problem with a lot of hobbyist, uh, um, like merchant adoption and meetup efforts is it's not sustainable. There's no money coming in from it. And so that's where remittances comes in. Remittances is a $700 billion a year industry. Um, you know, the, you know, that, and that's where strike people like strike and Kathy Wood are singing the same song I've been singing, uh, for years. Um, it is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, the fees, the average global fees are around six to 8% on remittances. Um, the, if you take a look at places like Cuba, Venezuela, um, sub-Saharan Africa, um, you know, hyperinflationary countries, maybe like Zimbabwe, Turkey, like those fees can get nuts. They can get as high as 40%, uh, or more, or even more in some cases, because people will receive their remittance via, um, you know, your Western Union or MoneyGram. And then they'll get local currency and then they'll immediately exchange that for dollars, right? Physical dollars. Or, or uh, they use mom and pop setups, you know, like uh, Dwala, I think it might be called, that kind of a thing, you know, where, um, you know, like one brother is in the home country, one brother's in the US, or, and then, you know, and then people, you know, give money and then they give out money, you know, and then at some point they move like huge suitcases of cash or, or some even use uh, localbitcoins.com um, in order to settle up accounts or whatever. But here's, but the, these, these kinds of mom and pop fly by night, sometimes fly by night things, um, you know, I don't want to hate on mom and pop or small business because it's essential, but the fact is that there are, you know, many Venezuelans here in Colombia, which is where most of the Venezuelan diaspora uh, arguably is present, have told me they've been ripped off. They've been ripped off over and over again. So, you know, how, like if you send 10 remittances of $500 each and only, you know, five get through, like, you know, even if the fee was only 10%, I mean, that doubles your fees, you know, effectively. So. Um, you know, if both sides can self custody, um, then, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty secure channel. And then you have, uh, inflows, right. And then you can, and then you, you have a reason for merchants to, uh, to adopt Bitcoin cash. You have in, in inherent motivation for them to learn to maintain, to advertise the fact that they have Bitcoin cash, right? Because in some of these countries, uh, you know, uh, remittances are a large chunk of, um, of their, uh, of their GDP. Uh, and when, you know, and remittances is so huge, like to be profitable, you wouldn't have to capture a large percentage of the industry. Um, and further, um, you know, just, 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 I mean, it's so big that even just a small capture could considerably increase the demand in the marketplace for Bitcoin cash as people buy it off of ATMs and brokers and OTC desks and centralized exchanges and DEXs or whatever to send, right? And hello, hello, higher Bitcoin cash price, right? So anyway, that's why I talk about inflows and remittances so much. You can get my business plan about that at panmoney.com slash uh, biz plan. That's P A N M O N I.com. And, um, let's keep building Bitcoin cash.